Hey everyone and welcome to RenderReady.com. I'm your host Al Heck and we have a great 3D challenge in store for us today. For this episode we aim to recreate the mouth-watering, refreshing look of one of our most favorite and cherished items in the world, bottled beer. And trust me, it took a lot of research, but I think I got it right. To do this, we're going to have to create water condensation. To create convincing looking condensation on any object like this bottle, you need three things. One, large water droplets. Two, small misty droplets. And three, the water streaks. But unlike any previous tutorial, this time we'll focus on using MoGraph. What MoGraph allows us to do is create multiple drops of water of varying shapes and sizes and apply it along our glass bottle geometry. So the challenge I present to you and for the world as a whole is can we recreate one of our most cherished possessions? So grab a cold one and let's see if we can make Anheuser-Busch proud. This is Render Ready. To start with this tutorial, we need a start file. And for our start file, you can grab that by going to RenderReady.com clicking on the tutorials button and if you search for tutorial number eight you'll find condensation on a bottle and right here I have built for you a starter file of the bottle so we really don't have to waste a lot of time trying to model a bottle uh, in Cinema 4D because you guys want to learn how to do water condensation I'm gonna I'm gonna save yourself a little bit of time because I know you guys want to get a little taste of the render ready ultra thick lager it's uh it's pretty awesome i i had a a drink of it the other day it's uh it's thick not like a guinness thick i i'm thinking more like a a black licorice on a hot day thick like uh cookie dough it's gonna be great if you clicked and started and download this file uh, let's get started and develop condensation on the bottle with the uh little water displacement that's going to be all around it. So here I have the model that you and I are going to be building. Uh, let me just go through the scene real quick so you guys know what I'm doing. Um, here, and I'm going to delete this random and I want you to delete it too because I'll show you how to use it later. Here I got five lights. We're going to leave these off for right now um, just because they'll slow down our rendering times and we have a floor and we have water droplets. I have built 12 individual water droplets and modeled each one individually for you. Uh, I have a bottle and I have a label top and a label bottom and I have a water droplet object which is the bottle itself. We're just going to put our geometry on top of it but we want to keep this hidden and I'll show you why. And then we have our beer bottle which is basically made out of a bunch of splines and then we have our sky attribute. And another thing I'd like to point out, global illumination and ambient occlusion are turned on. So first thing you should do is click this evaluate transparency. So without this checked on, ambient occlusion is going to be registered. So everything inside that transparency, uh, edgewise that's closed, is going to be black. So all your drops, because they're so small, they're going to turn completely black. So you got to turn on the transparency, uh, evaluate transparency, so that way when you do the ambient occlusion, you're not getting a bunch of black dots, but in fact you're getting you know a realistic looking uh, uh, droplet at that point. So let's get started. Uh, if you have your HDRI and it connects, this is great. If not, you might want to connect your HDRI to this. Um, start off with a new material, and we are going to call this bottle glass. And this, of course, is going to be our glass bottle. Now, we need to do a couple things. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to start turning on some of these channels that we need. So we need, uh, and same with me, uh, reflection, color, specular, specular color, bump, and transparency. So these six are the things we need. In color, set it to black because black is awesome. In transparency, we're going to reduce our transparency to about, oh, 70%, but we're going to keep our refraction at one. Then what we're going to do is change our resorption color and we're going to choose a tannish color. So 203 and 140 will give us the same, oh that's not it, 140, give you the same tannish color that I'm working with. And then we're going to change our absorption distance. 
down to 45. And what absorption distance is, is the thicker that your object is, kind of like how uh, ocean water, when it's up near the shore, it's pretty clear, but as you get deeper and deeper, it turns to a darker, darker color, um, just because you're seeing more inside of it, it's getting thicker, whatever. Um, that's kind of absorption color right there. The, the, the uh, less thick the shot is, the less color that's going to be absorbed. And so if you make this like 100, it's going to have a smaller amount of absorption color, so you have to make your object that much thicker to produce the same amount as you would, let's say, with uh, a 45, where it's going to get really dark really fast. Then um, what we're going to do is we're going to head on over to our reflection channel. And in our reflection channel, we're going to keep this the same, except we're going to do something called Fresnel. For those of you who don't know what Fresnel is, Fresnel is taking a gradient from what the closest item is and eliminating the opacity, but as the item shifts its angle uh, further and further away from you, it's the brighter and brighter the reflection occur, uh, the reflective qualities occur. Then we're going to go over to our bump channel. And for those of you who saw tutorial seven, we're gonna pretty much imitate what we learned with the bump channel over there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create multiple layers to build our bump channel. So in texture, choose layer. And this is kind of like Photoshop. Inside layer, we're gonna start with our first noise channel. And so I'm just gonna rattle off these, uh, these uh, things towards you. Uh, for noise, we're gonna turn this to Naki. And we're gonna change our global scale to 20 and we're going to change our octaves to one. And octaves are how complex your procedural shader will become. The more octaves you have, the more complex it gets, but also it's going to affect your render times. Um, so we're going to set this at one. Our global scale is at 20. Um, our low clip, we're going to move to about 50. And that's going to get rid of the grays and all that other areas. Just going to leave us with the brights of the bright. And on top of that, we're going to add a 20% contrast. So here we got a great looking starter bump channel. But we need to add the smaller dots, the smaller water droplets. So go to shader and noise. Inside noise, we're going to go and add blister turbulence. And we're going to set our global scale to 10. We're going to change our low clip to 50. And we're going to change our contrast to 60. And this is going to create a whole bunch of tiny little dots, tiny um, little droplets. We'll set the mode to add so we could see both. And then we'll drop the top noise channel down to 60. So when we look at our, bam our, uh, our bump, uh, the small droplets are going to be less intense and therefore they're not going to pop as high as the large droplets would. So the big droplets are bigger and the small droplets are smaller. Next we need to go ahead and create our um, streaks, our water streaks. To do this go to Shader, Surfaces, Tiles. And inside tiles, and this is what we're going to use as our mask, we're going to set our grout color number one and number two to white. We're going to change our pattern to lines, and we're going to increase our grout width to 30, set it vertically, and increase our use scale to 200. So basically, we created really thick lines, like in a zebra fashion or an NFL referee's uniform, whatever. And when we look at this, I want to make these dark areas block out the water droplets like a mask. And so all you have to do is right click, and we're going to have to do it with uh, both, I believe. Uh, in the noise channel, set this to layer mask. And you can kind of see that our noise is getting masked by this tile, which is kind of cool. Right click on that and copy that channel. We want to add one to this one down here. So create another color channel. Right click and paste. And then we'll set this to layer mask as well. So now both of these images are masked. But the tiles are perfectly straight, which is not, well, maybe in your reality, but mine, it's not like that in real life. So in effects, click distort. And this is going to cause your lines to wiggle out and it'll make your bumps wiggle out and everything. It's going to look really good when we're done. 
So that is our bump channel. Moving over to the specular channel, we are going to adjust the fallout width to about 46, the height to 100, and then we're going to do a fall off of 12. Also set your mode to metal, and this will give you a really cool look. And then finally, let's go to specular color. And specular color, if you want to add a slight yellowish tint to your bottle, it will help you out a little bit. Now let's go ahead and take this bottle glass and we're going to drop it into our beer bottle shader. And it's going to look transparent from here. But when we render it out, it'll look great. All right, rock on people. I like the way this glass is looking. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward. Now we're going to add our droplets. So in MoGraph, go to Cloner Object. And inside Cloner Object, we are going to take all these water droplets. Let me widen this up so you can see it. We'll take all these water droplets and we'll put it under Cloner. And then we'll stick that back under water droplets. Now for our cloner attributes, what we want to do is in object, we're going to set this to object. And for the object we're going to use, we're going to grab water droplet object and place that in there. Now, as you can see, it's going to line all of our droplets up based on the vertices of our uh, water bottle. We don't want it to do that what we want our distribution to be is on the surface. And this is going to evenly distribute our droplets throughout the entire surface of the bottle. But unfortunately, this isn't enough. So we're going to move this up to 500. And there we go. Now we're starting to get an even disbursement of water droplets here. Now, what we also want to do is we want to randomize the size of each one of these droplets. So clicking on Cloner, go to MoGraph, Effector, Random. Now, you can see all our droplets have just escaped off the edge of the beer bottle. That's because our random effector is randomly positioning automatically the X, Y, and Z of our droplets. Just turn that off and everything will go back to where it was. But in scale, click uniform scale and we'll adjust this to 0.33. This is going to adjust all our stuff by 0.33. I don't know how they do the math on that. I think everything is originally set at 1 and as you move to, or actually everything is set at 0 and then as you move up it adjusts everything from a max of 0.33 or uh, decreases everything by 0.33. So like with any good water droplet, in order to have uh, realistic droplets, you need a realistic looking material. So add a new material, and we're going to call this water droplet material. And in here we need to do a couple things real quick. We need to leave color, we need to leave reflection, we need to leave specular, specular color, and we need to leave transparency. So in color we're gonna set it to, yes you guessed it, black, and transparency we're gonna set this to 95 and with a refraction rate of 1.3 and this is going to actually bend all the uh, materials behind it to uh, match what um, water realistically does. In the reflection tab, we're going to choose 